precious blood of Jesus Christ. Jesus, we want the ocean of the most precious blood to begin to rain. Precious blood of Jesus Christ. Blood of Jesus Christ, say, let this blood sprinkle in every heart. Precious blood of Jesus Christ, save us. Father who art in heaven, hallowed be thy name. Thy kingdom come, thy will be done on earth as it is in heaven. Give it was this day our daily bread, and forgive us our transgressions, as we forgive those who transgress against us. We just not into temptation, but deliver us from evil. Hail Mary, full of grace, the Lord is in you. Blessed are thou among women, blessed is the fruit of thy womb, Jesus. Holy Mary, Mother of God, pray for us sinners, now and our prayers. Precious blood of Jesus Christ, save us and the world. Precious blood of Jesus Christ, save us and the world. Precious blood of Jesus Christ, save us and the world. Glory be to the Father, and to the Son, and to the Holy Spirit. As it was, as it was in, the in the beginning, is now, and ever shall be. Lord, Lord, Eternal Father, I offer you this day, I offer you all hearts that are listening to this message, and those who will later listen to this message in future, I beg you to draw us all closer to yourself, Increase the fire of love in our heart. Help us to deepen our relationship with you so as to enjoy you here on earth and forever in heaven. We ask this to Christ our Lord. Amen. Amen. So may the most precious breath that pours out from the sacred head of our Lord Jesus Christ, the temple of divine wisdom, tabernacle of divine knowledge, and sunshine of heaven and earth cover us now and forever through Christ our Lord. Amen. In the name of the Father, and of the Son, and of the Holy Spirit. Thank you, my dear brothers and sisters. Welcome again to this, uh, this day's conference. We are still in our topic, Journey to the Crucified Love. But today, we are going to treat maturity in love through the work of faith, or the, through the work of love. Maturity in faith through the work of love. But before we go to this important theme of today, I would still like to highlight some of the important points we mentioned last week. It is a continual, a continuous, uh, a continuous lesson. It is one lesson per se, but we are breaking it into two. So I would like to do a little refreshment from what we did last week, so as to help us to recall and move forward. I will emphasize a few important things and then enter into what we have today. Remember the topic, journey to the crucified Lord, which I actually emphasize that the growth in love is necessary because love begins from errors and moves slowly toward perfection in charity. So there is great need for purification of love. So uh, every Christian are called to perfection. And that perfection is nothing but perfection in love. 
Christian perfection is perfection in love. That is exactly what we are emphasizing. And that is exactly what we are going to see as we progress. Jesus wants us to grow in love. And then we are able to divide the stages into three, following the messages of the precious blood and other inspirations. First is animal love, when we are like animal. Another one is human love. Then when we become conscious of becoming human, and then crucify love or sacrificial love, when we are now becoming Christians and begin to reason like Christ and see our love in the mirror of Christianity, in the mirror of the sacrifice of Christ. And I call this uh, sacrificial love, descending love, the love that descended from above. And this descended love is very important for us to crucify. Jesus, for, for us to understand, Jesus said, love one another as I have loved you. So a new form, a new way of teaching, a new commandment I'm giving to you. Love one another as I have loved you. Not the love like animal, not only the love of human, which we characterize animal love in different forms, and one of the striking points here is that there is no consciousness of self, like every animal moved by instincts and impulse. So here, pressure, food, first for survival, and sex drive the force of the animal love. So we go to human love, and we're able to point out that we become human uh, when we become conscious of ourselves. And here, this conscious of, uh, of oneself leads us into what you call human love, which is rooted in self-love. And we'll be able to drive that love of self is characterized by self-will. So myself, I have to defend myself. Self-will is self-centered. And here, one of the major things here is that love is characterized by gain or the world, what I will gain. And when such is denied, then there is no love as far as human is concerned. Then we talk about crucified love, which is important that we should note here that it is equally a virtue or a charity. It's a supernatural gift. At times we may not be able to uh, get it ourselves. God can equally infuse it as a supernatural gift to us. So the perfection of this crucified love is absence of fear. Now, we now go from here, from animal love to crucified love, which we encourage that the journey from animal love to crucified love is a journey from self-love to sacrificial love. And it is equally a journey from human will to divine will. We define self-love and self-will and I made an emphasis that the greatest obstacle to our spiritual growth is self-will. It is the major cause of spiritual blindness. It is the first seed of pride in man. It is the bedrock of disobedience in man. It is the major reason for denial and betrayal, which we emphasize and explain. And above all, self-love has the capacity to collapse all the mansions built upon it if trial comes we give a lot of emphasis and a lot of explanation. So we talk about sacrificial love and divine will. We're able to say that we begin the journey to sacrificial love with knowledge that in his will is our peace. And this particular knowledge is very important. I, want, I would like you to see this quotation, this assertion, if you can call it so, as the turning point and the, as the major turning point of this reflection, that we begin the journey to the sacrificial love with the knowledge, very important, that in his will is our peace. Some people find it difficult to understand and believe this fundamental truth. Ephesians 2.14 made it very clear that for, for him himself is our peace. Jesus Christ, uh, making emphasis to Jesus or referring to Jesus, I say, for him himself is our peace, who has made us both one and has broken down 
in his flesh the divided world of posterity. This divided world of posterity can be interpreted in many ways. It can be interpreted in the war within ourselves, the war we fight with the world, the war we fight with Satan and other things. So divided world of posterity, sin divides us with ourselves, with the world and the rest. Now, this knowledge yielded faith working to the love, and that is the where we are trying to dwell today, maturity in faith through the work of love. And it is the same knowledge which we are going to begin today that will give us this knowledge that in his will is our peace. Because faith comes through healing. Faith, working through love, leads to sacrificial love. So if we we'll be able to move from this knowledge to that journey, and be able to get to this point, we now find out that here, there is no fear. Then we was able to make another fundamental point that this faith developed first from being aware of the love we receive from God, even while we are still sinners. An important emphasis, I made an important emphasis here that it is even in human being, we begin to love when we begin to understand the importance of the person in your life, what the person has done, what a human person has done, or what the person is going to be for you or stand for you, then love develops from there. In fact, uh, love becomes stronger the more the knowledge is increasing. The knowledge of what someone has done. I'm not talking about emotional feelings. I'm talking about sacrificial love. And that is exactly the love Jesus uh, has shown to us. St. John was able to make it clear to us in 1 John 4, 19 that we love because he first loved us, not the other way around. He loved because he loved us first. And our creation is a creation of love. God created us because we he, because he loves us. We are the effect of God's creation, the effect of God's love. God created human beings out of the abundance of his love. So beginning from creation down to redemption, we can see the immensity of God's love. It is in understanding this immensity, awareness of this greatness of God's love that we ourselves will begin the love. And that is where faith begin to come through. So I made it very emphasis here. This is another turning point in this in this reflection that faith develops first from being aware of the love we receive from God, even while we are still sinners. And in order to speak about this faith and connect it with the theological faith of love, we followed Thomas in his uh, uh, popular uh, datum that we're able to say, Thomas was able to say that nothing come through, nothing enter the intellect or even the will without passing through the senses. So in his uh, great Summa Theologian, first, first part of the second part, Bishop 62, Article 4, Thomas made it very clear that no human appetite moves either towards anything, either by hoping or loving, unless it be apprehended by sense or mind. And then, having established this fact, Thomas moved forward to say that faith precedes the other two virtues in the order of their coming to exist in a person. So what Thomas is trying to say here is, it is when you love in the act, love leads where it is, it is faith that leads us to love. You cannot love what you don't know. In, his, in one of his great work, he cannot love what he did not know. You, we, you know, then you love. In fact, even in the knowledge of God, we begin to know God and then we begin to love God. So get it very clear, and that will help us to make a major move. This turning point now leads us to 
Now, understand the message of the Bishop of Lord beginning from 2nd of July to 9th of July, 2003. This message has been a point. A lot of people read this message, interpret it in different ways. We are trying to give it a channel through which we can see it. We see this message speaking about the level and degree of awareness, knowledge of the infinite love of God. Our Lord systematically through his sense and other explanation divided it into five by saying that the first and the most le basic level, which corresponds to the animal level, animal love, is the friend who do not know the love. We explained it beautifully last week. Then we have the friend is on the second level, on the second degree, the friend who know the love, but do not want to love, which he called the hypocrisy. So we equally see the friend who have known the love, but do not know how to love. And we see this level, and we are the Lord is seeking for them to surrender. Then we see the inconstant friends of love. We are God want them to believe here. The emphasis is belief. So the true friends of love here was able to know that Satan has no power over the one who obeys. Now, let us move to this summary. I will be able to uh, talk an important thing here. So in the summary of all the five steps, so in the summary of all the five steps, which we summarize in this way. So in the first degree, love seeks our conviction because that is the friend who doesn't even know the love. He is seeking for their conviction. I remember that this five points here represent the five inner nature of faith. Five inner nature of faith, which we describe it here. That conviction, conviction, con conversion, surrender, belief, and obedience. When we are able to bring it, we see that it is the five arms of faith. Faith grows in these five arms, in, through conviction, through conversion, through surrender, then through belief. The highest, one of the higher form of faith, five higher arm of faith is disobedience. And that is, we cannot separate obedience as such with faith. It's the obedience of faith, very important. We're going to speak about this, this five nature of faith, a future of this conference. This summary is very important, is a, you call it a turning point of the, this, the whole uh, summary of the last week's message. So take note of that that in the first degree of awareness, the love, which is God himself, seeks our conviction. He wants us to at least be convinced because you have to com be convinced our conviction before we think about uh, even repentance. So the second degree of love, in this second degree, the love seeks our conversion. Now we have, we have already, we are already convinced, but we are not converted. There are many Christians who are convinced, but they are not converted. And that is where we see hypocrisy. People, uh, they belong to church, they belong to the evil spirit, they belong to cultism, they serve God and money, they serve God and Satan, but they are still. And this conversion is not speaking about, it's speaking about, we are talking about conversion from the heart, able to give, reject Satan and all his work and then turn towards God. Now, in the third degree, we look about surrender. In the fourth degree, we talk about belief and obedience. So today, having make a little brief summary of what we did last week, let us begin for what we have today. Now, our topic today is maturity of faith through participation in the work of love. I want you to turn down this topic on this theme. We have, we are already making a journey. We are making a journey. So we are now beginning to talk about that maturity of faith through participation in the work of love. 
look at what uh, St. John equally said here, which I captioned up there that perfect love is absence of fear. St. John said, there is no fear in love. Our goal here is when there is, when can we say that love matures? I want you to see what I'm doing here. What I'm actually doing here, I connect faith and love because they, we you can walk from faith and then move towards love. So growth in faith will equally be growth, will equally lead to growth in hope and love, as we know. Now, what I'm trying to point out here, the, the, the message I want to pass here is that when love is perfected already, there is maturity in faith. So that is what we want to achieve here. That Perfection in love is equally maturity in faith. Faith matures when love is perfected. That is, I want you to pick that point. So you see how we are moving the other way around. So there is no fear in love. Perfect, but perfect love drive out fear. That's what St. John is saying, because fear has to do with punishment. The one who fears is not made perfect in love. So it is well established from the theology of St. John that perfect love is absence of fear. Now, I go down to say that, so maturity in faith is absence of fear of servant, and it is the freedom of the soul. So when we be able, when faith is when there is no longer restriction, like when there is no longer a journey like a servant, then and complete fear, fear completely disappear because of perfection in love, there is equally maturity in faith. So let us move forward. You will see, you will understand more as we go further. further. In Galatians 5, verse 6, St. Paul will say, faith results in good work done in love. And look at what St. Paul said. For in Christ Jesus, neither circumcision or uncircumcision avails anything, but faith working through love. So faith results in good work done in love is actual the step forward towards maturity in, in, in maturity in faith. So faith matures when there is no longer fear in the work of love. That is, we can now say that faith is actually maturing. And then the love is actually being perfected. It's the two things here. As the love is perfected, faith is equally maturely. And Jesus will say that every good tree bears good fruit. So we know the good fruit. And here is where uh, the Protestant was able to debate. You cannot separate faith and work. Look at what we are trying to do here. You cannot separate work, faith and work. Even St. James made it very clear that faith by itself, if it has no work, is there. So here we are talking about the work we are speaking here is not every other any other work, but work in love. And that is why we are treating maturity of faith through participation in the work of love. So the more there is perfection in the work of love, when there is no fear in the work of love, the work is no longer working as a slave, or as a servant, there is maturity in faith. There is maturity in faith. And when there is maturity in faith, there is perfection in love. It's a little bit uh, systematic uh, 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 way of explaining it. But I believe the Holy Spirit will be able to make it very clear. When we go down, 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 you will be able to see the importance the great need for work of love. Because this work of love is what Christ was able to make it, make the emphasis that 
Every good tree bears, every good tree bears good fruit. The, the, there is never a good fruit without the work of love. Every tree yielded a good fruit out of the abundance of his love, just like human being, will become a participator in the work of faith when there is love maturely. So we're able to lender our service to God, not because of compulsion, not because of love of gain, but because we are now sons participating in the sonship of Christ and become children of God. So here, love completely controls our work. We are no longer working because of payment. We are no longer working the journey of perfection because we want to go to heaven as such, but because we love him. Because if there is no heaven, if there is no hell, those who have matured in love will still be children of God. Because we are Jesus is, we are where they are, we are they will be. But those who have not matured in the work of law, in the maturity faith through the work of love, who have not perfected in love, will be going to church because of the fear of hell, because they will be struggling to avoid sin because they don't want to go to purgatory. They will be struggling to avoid sin because they don't want to be punished by God. So that is an attribute of fear. So here, fear of being punished has rendered that love imperfect. So there is there's no perfection and there's no maturity in faith. So it is important for we who are devotees of the priesthood of God to watch it out. Why am I following God? Is it because I don't want to go to hell? Is it because I don't want God to punish me? Is it because of anything else? So there should be freedom of his son. God doesn't create us so that we will throw us into hell. Rather, he created us in love and wanted us to worship him in the freedom of love. And that is what we are talking about, maturity of faith through the work of love. The work of love, particularly the work of love, that is absence of fear. Absence of fear of being punished, absence of fear of being sent into hell, and so on and so forth. So let us coordinate this and know that there can never be a perfect faith, a maturity of faith without work of love. Work of love, not any type of work. So faith by itself, if not, if has no work, is there. St. James is very, very correct in making that statement. And we have to understand it in this maturity and this participation. Now, let us move because of time. And I, I go further by saying that, hence, we belong to Christ and his destiny. Very important. We who are lovers, devotees of the pressure of blood, we belong to Christ and his destiny. So when, whatever the destiny of Christ is, that is our destiny. The first lesson I began, I began with was talking about the destiny of the beloved, the faith of the beloved, a very interesting, some people call it controversial teaching. So how does it become controversial that those whom God loves, he chastises. So we are pastors in the destiny of the beloved. So we belong to Christ and his destiny. Whatever is the destiny of Christ is our destiny. So Christ is the beloved. We are surely in the beloved of Christ. And then we suffer the fate of the beloved. We will still go back to there. Well, I would still like you to go back to that teaching and be able to digest it well. And I made it categorical that nothing in this world following St. Paul in Romans chapter 8, 31 verse 39, Nothing in this world can possibly separate us from the love of God in Christ. Nothing in this world. Baptized into Christ and into his death. Two important emphases. We are baptized into Christ and into his death. Not only baptized into his 
death and ascension. We are equally baptized into his death. We belong to him. Walking in newness of life and we share in his resurrection. So we follow him in his joyful mystery, his sorrowful mystery. We are going to equally enjoy him in his resurrection, in his glorious mystery. Loman chapter 6, 1 to 11, we can make a comparison on that. So having journeyed so far, let us enter the city of God's love and malady love. So for all who are actually following this lesson, joining with me in this important journey of maturity in love, I would like us to make a further journey. There are the two places I want to take you. That is the city of God's love. In the city of God's love, the love will marry you. Now, it is equally interesting, but the wedding will happen in the palace. I would like you to not get this. So we're going to enter the city today and take you to the palace. So one thing will happen for those who will journey with us. God is expected to take us closer to himself and then marry us. So in the city, you will be God will organize us in this journey of this marriage and the wedding will happen in the palace. So let us begin. I will not waste time. We are bringing this message very closer and understanding it in the spirit of this devotion. The city of God's love. In my prayer during this hour, I saw in a vision a saint of God who was accompanied by three little children. The saint was holding a rose flower in his hand, coming closer his scent. Friends of Christ, I am happy to be sent by God to give you a lesson in this month of July dedicated to the precious blood of Christ. I am Saint Joseph, the chair spouse of Mary. In this month of July, God is trying to establish his print of love in your soul. He is calling all men into his holy city of love. Come and test this witness of love. This is St. Joseph speaking to us. Friends of Christ, love is a supernatural gift of God through which we love God and our neighbor. This is a gift which God gives to the little. The little ones are those who opens up to, the, to God's will. I would like you to make an emphasis here. The little ones, first, there's a connection here. This is a gift which God gives to the little. Love is gift of God to the little ones. So the little ones are those who open up to God's will. So there is a connection between the little and the living in the will of God. They are those who submit their will to God. They always choose to be weak, for God to be strong. This is what we call consummation of one's will into the will of God, immersing our will in the will of God, allowing the will of God to completely consume our will. This is exactly what it is here. They are sincere friends of God. To them, God pour out his grace of love. Some people will begin to ask, why is the little ones that God gives the gift of love? It is very important because there is this connection between our will and the love. So little ones entirely trust and yielded completely. They have nothing but the, the, the will of the one who created them, and that is God himself. Even in the physical world, our children become little because they have no will. They only listen to us with parents and ask our mommy, what will I do? Because he has no will of himself. God wants that childlike confidence in us for us to actually utilize and possess this precious gift. Friends of Christ, do you want the gift of love? St. Joseph asked. You must leave your level of vanity. 
This is the level that makes you to be the slave of the world and friend of Satan. Throw away the cloak of Christ, which overburdened you, and put on the aplomb of humility. The man of pride is a friend of Satan. Fear the book of lies you are carrying in your heart and take in the truth of life. Satan is the father of all liars. There's a, a silent point that I would, the, the message is emphasizing here. The first of all, vanity. All lovers of vanity find it difficult to love. And again, he talks about the, the pride. Humility offers us an opportunity to become little. Now, he equally speaks about lies. Truth, truthfulness is equally a gift of a lover. In fact, truth builds trust. The other time I was emphasizing that many people seem to love, but they don't trust. Majority in love, we equally become maturity in trust because that we equally be that perfection in trust we make we remove all form of fear so let us move forward and see what the sentence is saying finally i say put off this mantle of iniquity that scare your god away and put on the mantle of purity so lovers must be faithful lovers there should not be atom of impurity god your god is holy you must be holy, friends of Christ. Do you want to love? The second question. You must search for love. Having Solinda and give up our, our vices and our nefarious life. So the saint is now talking about search. He said, like a young man who is looking for a wife to marry, you must look for the love. You know how restless the young man will be until he finds his wife, the bone of his bone and the flesh of his flesh. In the same manner, do the lovers of love until their heart embrace the love. The love is the peace of their soul. So here, what the message is trying to point out, so Joseph is trying to point out here is that there is need for one to search. The fact you pursue the love, you have, even in human in the human way, when you see the object of your love, you are attracted to it. It has to draw you closer to himself. So here, the emphasis is that there's a need for such. You cannot sit. And the last I say, okay, let, there must be yearning. The, the, your heart must move towards the object of your love. That is what the Sir Joseph is trying to say. You must search the love. Now, Friends of Christ, do you want to love? The third question, you must marry the love. The woman will leave her family and go to the man. Both of them will unite and become one body. I mean that the lovers will leave their family, we talk about the world, and go to the man they love. And both of them will unite and become one body in love. Here, Christ is the head. We, the lovers from the past, this holy marriage of love calls that you must leave everything and follow the love. He is your faithful husband. Be sincere to him. It's a powerful emphasis of St. Joseph. He said, friends of Christ, at this stage, any little attempt to love the love will obtain for you this special gift of God's love. I will stop here. For Christ to bless you, so I leave you. An important point, which I would like you to pick here, is that the three stages of St. Joseph, first of all, giving up the world, then become humble, then search the love, and then marry the love. It's the stages we have already started. So, but what the point is here is that in the city of God's love, which all of us are called, we are to marry the love. 
Let us look at what Jesus said. Immediately the vision passed. Then appeared the agonizing Jesus Christ who calmly said, my lovers, unless you leave everything and come after me, you cannot marry me. How can I share my wife with the world? How can I call a prostitute my wife? No, my wife will be a faithful lover. She will be chest and pure. She will have me alone. We talk about faithfulness here. We talk about complete, uh, complete freedom from any shackle of sin, attachment to worldliness, complete renunciation. We are talking about giving up everything and then empty our hearts of whatever that is occupying it and offer it to God. The love of God increases in, in, a, in an empty heart. God set up, set his fire in, the, in those hearts that are actually loving. So when there is some unsettled issue, you still attach your heart to certain things that is not of God. Certain things of pioneers, you are still considering whether to give up this attitude or not. Love cannot. For example, when someone is still considering, will I stop fornication? Will I stop adultery? Will I stop smoking? Will I stop stealing? Will I stop telling lies? These enemies, which I call enemies, occupy some major part of us. So we are so much attached to it. They become our allies. They become our friends here. It becomes so difficult for God to possess to marry us. So we need freedom. We need total freedom and freedom from, from all this slavish apartment wall to sin, to Satan. And Jesus concludes by saying, I bless you, O oh, faithful lovers, as you come in the name of the Father, of the Son, and of the Holy Spirit and may immediately the vision pass. Now, the, that is the first message. And the, in the same journey to crucify love, I would like you to listen to the second message. My prayer during this hour, I had a vision of Our Lady, the other one is St. Joseph. So Joseph has said several of you things about that journey to the city of God's love. So our lady wants to say something. So I had a vision of our lady who came with little cherubim. Too many to be counted. She came closer and gently said, Oh, little friends of Christ, how are you and how do you enjoy the lesson of this great news? I hope that you are growing in love. I see Jesus calling you to love. He wants to increase his love in you so that you can mature in the, in the perfect love. Children of love appeal to you to respond to this call of holiness. I am the flower of love, the mother of the agonizing Jesus Christ. These are ladies trying to persuade us to stay in love. So I come to teach you how to love children. Love is a gift that God gives to a free soul. I would like you to underline that the word, a, a free soul. In fact, even in the world, it is equally free souls that love, love deeply, love without stain. So when someone is free, he can easily love. So a free soul is the soul who has freed, him, freed herself from the slavish attachment to creatures. An important point. Slavish is an emphasis there. Slavish attachment to creatures, to life, even to self. Just like the birds of the air, they are free lovers. God gives them the peace of love. Just like the little children, they are weak and freely surrender to love. God cares for them. Be free. Oh, little children of God, have confidence in God's love. Surrender to his perfect will. 
you will find peace in his love. Jesus died for you. He merited your love. Remember that he is an innocent lamb, slaughtered to free the condemned world. You are one of those he died for your love. Yes, you are one of those he died for their sins. Even though you did not know him, even though you did not love him, he loves you so much. Even to bear the fate of your sins, he is the one who calls you friends, but you call him an enemy. Who blesses you, but you curse him. Who loves you, but you hate him. I would like us to see that this emphasis of our lady is true. This is exactly what we do to Christ. Oh, what wrong has he done to you to merit this hatred of yours? An important question to ponder. What did Jesus do to us? What did God do to us that we cannot love him? Children of God, return to your God. He is waiting for you to bless you with the peace of his love. Children, what will you do for the one who died on behalf of you, for the love of you? From the grave of death, he rescued you by offering his own life. He took the place of your punishment and was condemned as a criminal. He died when he has not committed anything, all for love of you. Answer me, O oh little children of Christ, what shall you do to the one who died on behalf of you? He is waiting for you to respond to his call of love. He will bless you. I heard St. Joseph telling you to marry the Lord. Oh, I call on you to unite with the crucified Lord, and he will unite with you. Unite with him through your devotion to his love. Unite with him through sincerity and purity. Three things is mentioned here. Devotion to his love. Sincerity and purity. Unite with him through your obedience to his will. And that is the fourth one, obedience to his will. At this level, where you are able to unite your whole being to him, lift up your hands in submission. The Lord will definitely bless you with the gift of true love. Children, the lesson of this novena is love made easy. I will not go on to teach you now because the little ones are satisfied. Though the great ones are empty, so may Jesus bless you and leave you. These simple lessons we are trying to explain will be much easier for the little ones, the simple souls, the little souls who participate as victim lovers but those great and the empty proud ones will always be empty. They will ask you to know, to get more, more, more tools when everything must have been said. Immediately, she vanished from my sight. The, uh, then appeared the agonizing Jesus Christ who calmly said, I am happy to see you. I am happy to see your willingness to love. I will help you. I bless you. Barabbas, tomorrow I will give you the summary of the program of the September reparation. Plan everything ahead of time and have your mind at rest. So I bless you in the name of the Father and of the Son and of the Holy Spirit. Immediately, the whole vision passed. And that was the message of 8th July 2003. Then another important message that will take us finally to the city of God's love. 
Today being the last day of the first nine day novena of the month of July, in my prayer, I had a vision of the agonizing Jesus Christ who can be said, peace be with you. O oh, lovers of Christ, I bless you, my little consolers. Your consoling voices are coming to me like holy incense of admiration. Oh, I receive your consolation against those who are insulting me. I will pay you back with the gift of love. I am the king of love. I am the love who love you before you know of love. I choose you as my friend when you were. I choose you as my friend when you were a leper. You were rejected by the world and we are doomed to die in abandonment. I am the one who remembered you and called you friends. I offer my life to, for love of you, even to die that you might live. I cured you, I made you clean, and I died for you. How did Jesus do this? He did this to his incarnation. When the whole world is already in the complete darkness, he came. We are just like leper. Our body is full of sin. He cleans us. What the wounds of his body represent after scourging is what our sin represents after the fall of man. We are all wounded with sin. Just like the whole body of Christ being completely bruised and wounded. That is the nature of sin, the ugly nature of sin in every human being. And that is what the prophet will say. Through his scourging, we are healed. He takes our own, our own punishment, our leprosy, and then bore it on himself through his wounds. An important emphasis that we must know, listen, and believe. I am the king of love. Remember how I visited you when you were condemned in the prison. I took your place over your condemnation and set you free. Oh, how I suffered for you in the prison of death was so bitter, but I bore all for love of you. Children, indeed, I suffered bitter agonies for love of you. Not only that, but I was also condemned to die for your sins. Yes, I died for you when you were still sinners. The love of Jesus Christ does not start before we begin to love. God does not call us beloved or lovers when we are saints. We are he calls us lovers when we are still sinners. And that is what, why we began this journey of God's crucified love from the animal level. Even when we are nothing, he is still call, calling us lovers. And this greatness of love, the awareness of this greatness of love is the starting point of our own love. Take note of that. I am the king of love who came to his own people, but his own people did not welcome him. He came to them and announced the good news of peace. He fed the hungry, cured the naked, freed those in prison, cured the sick. Upon all these favors, his own people rejected him. Not only rejection, but they also suffered him in the Rest way possible and finally thank him on the cross. For him to die the most shameful death in order to save you, save us from the most shameful death. I mean the second death. 
This is exactly what the Lord did. All these things are what I did for you in order to prove that I really love you. Yes, you do not love me. You are still crucifying the love, which this powerful word is what many, many theologians are doubting. How can we crucify the love again? Are we still crucifying him? This is one of the points of uh, contemplation on the, even the many theologians who are looking into the messages, they were a major argument they are emphasizing. How are we crucifying the law? How are we crucifying Christ? But the obvious, it is obvious. When we sin, when we treat it as a cheap thing, the blood of, the sac of our sacrifice, the blood of our redemption, we treat it as a cheap thing. We are crucifying the law. We are wounding the law. And the message is very clear. Say, come back to me. I am calling you back to love. And remember, the call to love is called to perfection in love. Come, I will bless you with the new gift of true love. That is the sacrificial love. I have forgiven you. A powerful word of hope. I have feel, I will heal you. I will heal your wounded heart. That is another great word of hope. I am the king of love. And that is the summary of this message. Now, look at the summary of what happens in the city of God's love. In the city of God's love, the love marries the love. Here, Jesus is asking us to come into this city to marry us. Honeymoons begin here. In the city of God's love, we begin the honeymoon. The age of miracle begin here. That is age of miracle. We are going to begin by next week. Begin to talk about the level of perfection. Here, the age of miracle begins here. What is the age of miracle? The age of miracle is where, uh, let me even begin with the, the honeymoon. The honeymoon is the, the level of the first love. The age of the first love where we think that we are the only person that God loves, and we, we are free to do whatever, no fear, that, that is already fear, it seems to disappear, that we, we see that our God is this and that and that. So here is an interesting age. We are going to discuss it moon, the honeymoon. That is the level of the first love, where Christians experience beauty in, in their journey of perfection. So. Age of miracle is where we begin to think that everything is eatable. We, we look for, we are seeking for, we are asking God, just we know God by what he gives us. Just like many, many husbands and wives, those who really marry, so you categorize the love of your partner by what he gives you. What, uh, when there is a gift, the, the exchange of gifts, they take you out, they uh, spend times in the in restaurants, in the beach, in the very places, buy you plenty of things. In this way, you see your husband as the most. So after, in the city of God's love, when God actually marries a soul, there is this age. We begin to experience something like this. So much that we think that God is the God of miracles. In, in Nigeria, there's this particular song they used to sing that God of miracles, now my papa, God of miracles, now my daddy. So here, Jesus become your daddy, become your papa, become everything. So yeah, and the dear now say, Me, I go, me, I no go so far, I no go back for bread. So here. A child of God sees himself that he cannot uh, beg for bread, he cannot suffer anything. So the age of power and authority here, this is where a lot of people begin to do a lot of, in the, all this thing happens in the city of God's love. Here, the age of power and authority, you can command that you can claim all the possession of this world that belongs to you. Power and authority. You can command Satan to fall down from sky and do a lot of things. So there is no fear. We are going to go there deep tomorrow in the next coming week to we'll discuss these levels. So the age of creativity, so begin to look for what you want to do. Here, 
I will not go deep to teach all these levels today, but the age of creativity here end up the honeymoon. Yeah, this book I wrote, 15 Levels of Perfection, we're going to deal with it, summarize it, because that is where love is taking us. So we will see what happened in the city of God's love. So in the city of God's love, in summary, love marries the love. Honeymoon begins. Age of miracle begins here. The age of power and authority continue here. The age of creativity ends the honeymoon. So by next week, we begin to talk about what happens in the age of creativity. Now, the age of awareness opens door to the palace of God's law. So what I would like you to see here, the simple thing I want to see here is in the palace of God's law, all these beautiful things happen, but don't remain in this palace. Enter into the, uh, don't remain in this city, outside the city. Move, try and follow us, follow Christ to the palace of God's love. So this is the beauty things we are trying to see here. So what happens in the city is this. As in the city, there is marriage, honeymoon begin, age of miracle begin here, age of power and authority continue here. Edge of creativity ends the honeymoon. Uh, then you will understand this in much next week. The edge of awareness open door to the palace of God's love. That is an interesting thing we are going to do next week. Now let us move to the palace of God's love so that we will it will help to make the teaching more interesting coming week. So I believe that you are with me in the city of God's love. So don't remain outside the city. Let us go and see the king in his palace. Today being the eve of the last day of the month of July prayers, I saw the vision of a little saint of God with five kilobits. Five kilobits. Understand? Maybe see the reason for that. They sang the hymn of the rules of perfect spirit. As they came down from the crowd, after a while, the saint said, Little friends of God, I know you love the song you heard or sang. Do not worry much to learn it now. Cecilia will teach you tomorrow before the final blessing of our dear Jesus. I am your daughter, Teresa. Come and hear my lesson and love. The song actually here, this song is the song of the Rose of Perfect Purity. That is Rose of Purity, yes, in the kingdom of God, in this wicked world, that all men will come to love. God the Father, the beautiful hymn, we always soon learn if you have not learned it before. So we continue the message in the palace of God's love. Saint, Saint Teresa will say, no love is greater than this. To die for the one you love, my dear Jesus has done it for us. He loves us so much. What shall we do to pay him back? Nothing but to love him and freely give him all he has and freely Give him all we have. Friends of the living God, you cannot love unless you are free. Repeating what the saint actually says. You, your heart must be free from all earthly attachment and passion of an earthly man. I am, I mean that nothing will occupy your heart that Jesus who loves you much. All wounded heart must heal before they can love. I mean, those hearts that have felt the abandonment of their unfaithful lovers, their wounded hearts must be healed so as to be free to grasp the love of the faithful lover, Jesus and the Son of God. What St. Teresa is actually emphasizing here is that it is important, it is important for us to know that when a heart is wounded, then that heart may find it difficult to love. It is important that the, the heart must be healed. The heart must be healed first 
before you can speak and talk about healing, the, the journey to love. So let us move forward. You will see something. Friends of the living God, to love Jesus means to give him your whole heart, your whole mind, and your whole soul. Think of him always. May my Jesus, my dear Jesus, by the center of your heart, this loving offering is a living sacrifice that is pleasing to Jesus. The living sacrifice is manifested in total submission to the divine will of God. My Lord, oh, not my will again, but the will of him I love so much. Jesus, my joy. The voice of my soul will cry always. What shall I do to make my Jesus happy always? I will hear Jesus saying, offer me your whole being as a living sacrifice. May I be everything. May nothing again trouble your soul except me. Friends of the living God, how sweet to hear the voice of my dear ones, my dear loved ones. It falls like dew in the dryness of my thirsty soul. My dear Jesus, I need your words always. That is enough for me. What does St. Teresa is trying to say here? He's trying to say that when we love, we desire, we yearn to hear the voice of the one who loves us. Friends of the living God, Jesus is a jealous lover. He does not want to share his lover with anyone. He wants to own his lover alone and or else he abandoned her. Oh, how passionate my Jesus is to have me alone as to die for me on the cross when I did not love him. Now I have found him. I will have him alone. I will die for love of him. Friends of the living God, how sweet to enjoy the friendship of Jesus. When I knew nothing, I want you to listen to the story of St. Teresa here. When I knew nothing, he called me. He won me with all the favors of, with all the favors he had done for me. At that time, he did not dare to want to hear my voice calling to him for help. He would run quickly to answer me. I know him as the God of miracles. His miraculous deed to me made me enter deep into his palace of love. Jesus, you are so wise and kind. Oh, how you drew me nearer and nearer to your love. My entrance into your palace of love opened my eyes to a new awareness of your love. The age of miracle has gone. I see you in agony for my sake. This is how I become a consoler. Jesus, you are wise and loving to make me your consoler. Those you love, you chastise. If I had known that you, your way is so rough and painful, would I have followed you? But now I have come to your love. I have come to your love. How can I abandon you? Dear Jesus, you are wise and merciful. This is St. Teresa's journey. There's something I would like you to pay attention to know. Friends of the living God, this is how Jesus win his lovers. In the palace of love, the door of earthly miracle closes to open the door of heavenly miracles. The earthly miracle is of the earthly needs and of revenge. But the heavenly miracle is of the heavenly needs and of forgiveness. At this level, the royal way of the cross is made known. Dear Jesus offers his lovers his symbol of love. The symbol is their own crosses to carry. Many desert him at this stage. 
but all who remained with him and carried their own crosses and followed him with test this witness of his love. They are those my dear Jesus called the consolers. Jesus promised to open the mystery of love to them and emphasis. Those who give up did not did so because they are still in the shadow of knowing Jesus as the God of miracles. The real person of Jesus is far from their knowledge. They are not lovers, but seekers. Friends of the living God, the person of Jesus signifies the mystery of his joyful death, his sorrowful death, and his glorious resurrection. Let those who rejoice in his miraculous deeds share in his agony so as to enter the glory with him. I hope you will not abandon him on his Calvary way of salvation. May my Jesus, my dear Jesus, give you the grace of the love. I am praying for you all to conquer the world by means of love. Immediately the whole vision. That is the message of 30 July 2002. So what is St. Teresa trying to do here? Beautiful thing. St. Teresa is trying to explain that in the city of God's love, there is a lot of miracles, signs. We see God that, in fact, there is a holy moon, what we call holy moon in the relationship with God. Now, well, but when God takes us gradually, gradually into the paradise of love, he closes the door of earthly miracles to open the reality of true love. Now, the age of value. You know, there is a time when a child is growing, he sees sweet things as the most valuable things. Now, as an adult, God take away those sweet, sweet things and equally want us to take some bitter things and be able to balance our, our, our sugar level in our body. So in this way, God is now taking us to new awareness, new beauty, something more important than the other way around. So in the presence of God's love, the door of earthly miracle closes, the door of heavenly miracle opens. The reality of our call begins through lovers, through joy. In fact, this awareness, this age of true value becomes something important that whoever really want to follow the Lord must not only remain at that entrance door. So many people abandon here. Many people begin to go back. Some friends used to say, Tell me that at the early stage of their Christianity, knowing the Lord, whenever they pray with this devotion, they receive the signs, they receive the miracle, whatever they pray, immediately God answers. But what is it that at a certain point in the level of their relationship with God, it is no longer happening that way? Things begin to close up. Jesus begins to open himself into the middle of love. Then the gift of the cross becomes a precious gift. And understanding the faith of the beloved begins to become a reality. So, some of what happens in this palace, before I conclude, is that the door of earthly miracles closes to open the door of heavenly miracles. The knowledge of true value begins here. We begin to understand what actually is really a variable thing, what actually matters gift of divine wisdom and knowledge, understanding is actually increased here. The Holy Spirit, these gifts is now more here, wisdom, knowledge, and understanding. Understanding what is valuable, what is real value for the kingdom, the value of the kingdom, true value of the kingdom. So the beloved becomes the cross bearers here. Jesus makes the beloved to know that you must carry your cross daily and forever. So the cross bearer becomes the crucified lover. So you see how it moves. So here it is in the palace of God's love that we now discover that the cross bearer will soon become a 
justify lover. We share in the faith of our lover. So in conclusion, because I've taken a lot of time today, I will conclude with this beautiful word by saying that how beautiful it is to be the true friends of the crucified love. He offers his lovers only but one thing, holiness. And on the earth, it is the meanest, the poorest, the roughest, the thorniest, and the most persecuted thing that exists in heaven. Its meanness is changed into immensity, its poverty into riches, it turns into flowery carpets, its hardness into smooth prison path, its persecution into peace and beatitude. So it is therefore a heroic level to be sent and friends of the crucified love of earth. May God bless these words in our hearts as Mama Maria prays for us. Amen. In the name of the Father, and of the Son, and of the Holy Spirit. Eternal Father, we have, you have fed us with the word of life. We have heard your message. You have called us from emptiness to fullness, from animal man to crucified lovers. We beg you to let the fire of love flame in our hearts. Let nothing stop this fire until we are completely consumed in this fire of love. This we pray. In the name of our Lord Jesus Christ, your son, who lives and reigns with you in the unity of the Holy Spirit, one God forever and ever. Amen. In the name of the Father, and of the Son, and of the Holy Spirit. Peace be with you. Thank you for your patient listening. You have taken one hour, 30 minutes or, or less. So it is now time for question. I will end the slide and uh, listen to you so that we can answer much of your questions. So I will uh, beg my brother Enes to uh, unmute uh, some, uh, some people so we can now uh, answer some of the questions. I would like uh, us to begin time for questions. I know that you may have some questions. So for me, so if you have the questions, you can ask. I see someone raising hand. So my dear sister, you can ask your question now. I have two questions, but I don't want to be the first to ask because okay. I've been the first. This two, the two la matter. last. Okay. <laughs> ask Just, your question. Okay. So my first question has to do with faith working or resulting in good works like it is written in Galatians chapter 5 verse 5. I know, I understand that fraternal correction is a good work. Like if you see somebody doing something that is not what they should be doing, we have like, it is an act of love to correct them. It's a work of love. Yeah. yeah. And also I'm looking at the, I'm trying to connect it to the sentence which says that perfect love is absence of fear. Yes. So I'm in a situation where I have faith and I, I strive to express my faith in good works. However, I lack courage sometimes. For instance, I have a housemate at the moment. She's a Catholic. She's much older than me but her first son is almost my age. So when we go for mass, she receives Holy Communion, even though she doesn't go for confession. She's not actively Catholic. She's just like a passive Catholic. Once in a while, she goes for mass, you see. So I don't know how to tell her. So I bought a book that explains the Catholic faith and I gave her the book as Christmas present, but she doesn't even read. She said she doesn't like reading. 
So we still go for mass and she still receives communion, but I don't know how to say to her, Doris, this is not, I don't know. So that's my first question. So in that situation where we say perfect love is absence of fear, I'm not saying that my love is perfect, my love for God is perfect, but I do believe that I have faith and I want to express my faith through good works, but I lack the courage. Does it mean that my love or my faith is defected or has a defect in this case? due to lack of courage. So that's my first question. Yeah. Then my second question is, I just, when I when you were reading about the experience of St. Teresa of, of the little flower, and it's also a sim similar to my experience in that when I started with God, almost everything I prayed for was answered. But at a point, it was as if God doesn't even listen to me anymore. You <laughs> see, that's how it feels sometimes. And I can quite understand that he probably believes that I have grown in maturity. So he understands or he wants me to understand that he wants to purify me and chastise me and all of those things. But my concern is... I have siblings who don't, they are, we are all Catholics because we are all baptized, you see, but I'm the only one who is actively practicing. So I've been striving to encourage my siblings, some of them, to get closer to God. But the, this, the sufferings I'm going through even makes them or drives them away from God in the sense they even, some of them have even mocked me openly. Like when I visited my sister, my my third sister in the US in 2016 and we were talking and I, I brought up the issue of trusting God. She said, she said it in our dialect. So like you that go to church, you pray, what have you gained from it? You see, and it hurt me so much to hear that. And another sibling has also said that, even a friend has said that to me, but my sibling even said to me, this, why do you keep trusting in God? Why don't you come to this and look for solution, like to come to a native doctor and look for solution, you see? So because of that, I'm, I don't, my question is, why does God allow certain sufferings, especially prolonged sufferings, if those sufferings are making people lose faith like not, not, I'm not losing faith. I'm, I'm, I'm happy that he blessed me with faith because truly faith is a gift. If it wasn't a gift, I would also probably have abandoned him, you see. But I'm watching people I love going away from God because they see me as like so far ahead. So that's my exactly. question. Yes, thank you, my sister. It's a beautiful question. Beginning from the first one. In love. In perfect love, there is absence of fear. And courage, if glory is a virtue, is a virtue, we call it fortitude, is one of the cardinal virtue. And cardinal virtue, which we are going to treat as we, when we move towards this level of perfection, there's something we are going to go back. Before we get to the lesson of the road of perpetuity, we are going to treat virtue. Because what actually I am trying to do is the work we are trying to do is to take the devot devotees in the spirit of understanding the messages. When they are reading these messages, let them understand what the lover, the Lord, is calling us to. It is not just to read the messages and interpret it emotionally without going deep into the core understanding of this message. We're eventually going to make a book out of this uh, and then be able to get more uh, deeper understanding. So there is a virtue called prudence. Prudence like a mode to other cardinal virtues, all that we do. It is lightly defined as the right thing to do in the time of decision, the right thing, the right action to take, understand the right action to take. So we are going to treat it in a deeper understanding. So we everybody have a courage, you have courage, uh, that is which is can be 42 this time around. Then we have the other one, that, that of uh, 
for my mind. I cannot speak out of the top of my spare strength and mind. But this cardinal virtue will help one to be able to be able to know and uh, control oneself in a matter when correcting, when making a correction. So it is good to tell someone what you are doing is not good, but it is equally good to do it at the right time, at the right place, then in the right word, when we are going to treat kindness, you will know that there are about five types of kindness. We have kind thoughts. Before you even begin to think, you can you think kindly? Then we have kind words. Kind word is not just like that is the, in, in making this correction, is there a kind word? Then apart from this, we now have kind action. Uh, yeah, kind action. Then kind action, how did we carry on to this? They'll have kind listening. That is the most hardest. Are you able to listen kindly? They may be uh, uh, look at that person who is not practicing a uh, Catholic well. Are you able to uh, look at that person and find out why is this person doing that? Then there is another one which is not always emphasized: kind looking, looking with an aspect, looking with a consideration. How did you look at this person? So this five kindness is very important in, in be able to. And now it is not fear that is preventing you from taking this action. It is not fear that is preventing one from taking this action. What is actually preventing one from taking this action is prudence. So you, you are to do this action in a prudent way possible. So when you do it in a prudent way, then there is no way you cannot win that person back to God. That is one of the major problems we are facing in Christianity. So you want to preach. How did you even preach, go about preaching the message? Did you preach in a vulgar way, in a way that you want to make her correct her by all means and bring her back by all that she doesn't know? There's some other preaching that can even do more action. That is when uh, one will be able to go by way of love. You win that person back to God through the attribute of love. So in speaking the truth, a great lover doesn't fear in speaking the truth. But you will speak the truth in a gentle, loving way, without hurting anyone, with, but the truth must be told. He must pass the truth. And that is why in, a, in when love is there, a lover knows how to speak to his the loved one in a, in a smooth way. And the, the lover will equally get that, love, that message without hurting him or her. In a family setting, if love is there, the most terrible word can be passed, or most painful word can still be passed to one's partner without hurting the person. That is, that, that is too long. That is, that shows that you are not avoiding telling him or her what she's supposed to know because you are afraid of hurting her or hurting him. But you tell him what he should know in love, and then the person will receive that message in love. And that is why we say we are there is love, there is absence of fear. So even my little words, my, our students here, or that is, they tell me everything they want to tell me because they know that I love them and they love me and they can even say something can, that can hurt other people outside. But my very self, I will not fear the hurt because the way they will say it and the way the, the, they will put it will become so simple that I have nothing but to accept what they say. I will not be, I will not fear the heart. My brothers do the same to me. They come to me freely and say their mind without such fear. Uh, and that gives me joy. So we are the perfection of love. Love is perfected when there is absence of fear. We are no longer living like a slave to one another. 
We are no longer living as a servant to one another. There is a freedom of the son. And there is freedom of friendship. Jesus will say in the conclusion of this answer that I am not calling you slave any longer. I am calling you friends because I have given you everything I have learned from my father. So take note of that point. So then the second question we, is very simple. And that is what we are beginning to by next week. Uh, we are beginning the journey of perfection. So we have the journey, we have made a journey to crucify love. So we are entering into the level of perfection. Beautifully in this devotion, Jesus gave us 15 steps that is built into three, three encounters, three meetings in the level of perfection. So here, interestingly, in the age of honeymoon, the first love, when God is drawing a soul, he treats it like a queen. The soul experiences beauty and joy and whatever, interestingly. So even before you finish saying a prayer, God has already answered you. Everything is working as you want. You command, you can even boast of anything. You, you trample upon anything without any fear. But this level is just a beginner. So at the second level, which is which begins in the parents of God's love, God begins to show you what really matters. It is not the food of these earthly things that matters. It is not possession of all these things that we will soon live that matters. There is something more valuable than milk. Of that there, there are something more valuable than manna, which we, you, we are eating in the desert, and our ancestors eat it and die. And that thing is his own body. And his body is, and Christ made it very clear. When he preached about that, his body, many people left him. He said, he told the apostles, will you still go? And that is the turning point in John chapter 6. When you talk about intimacy with the eucharistic life intimacy of love eating the body of christ and becoming like christ and the christ said whoever eat this body and blood will not die that is becoming complete one consummation in, in the mystical union and marriage which every catholic every christian is expected to reach at this time when we become one with him we share in his own faith and that become perfection in love. But let me even make something very clear to you. Here, we are not talking about what the world is saying about me, what the world is talking. What we are, what we are trying to see is what we know, the beauty we know. Look at St. Teresa making it very clear. I know, I know him. I can't abandon him. I can't leave him alone. Just imagine, someone who has an encounter with God, a deep encounter with the love of God. How can you think of abandoning him? What on earth is more sweet than testing the love of Jesus? This is sweet Jesus. This is Christ who is everything. What then in the world can satisfy a soul? It is someone who have not experienced it. Whoever have Whoever have ever, if anyone have ever seen or encounter or touch him, you cannot but allow this love to consume you. Of course, we make it in a very brief way. He said, in, in, in resting, in returning, or in resting, we shall see. And when we see, then we shall love. And when we love, there's nothing that can, we praise him and we marry him. No soul who have ever encountered the love in the contemplative union have ever think of anything less than possessing him. That is what makes, that one of those things that can make a young man or a young woman to leave his house and everything and enter into the, into the desert and become monks and nuns. That is an encounter for those who have, have genuine encounter the real value of the kingdom comes. So when people are struggling with power and positions and other things, you'll be pitying them because they are still in the age of 
edge of uh, creativity, we begin to float in the love of God. Now, our, our encounter with God become like swimming in the, in the work of God. I will use the word, God will be doing all the doings in you. You are no longer the one doing things. God will be moving, moving world. The love of God becomes everything. But this talk or speech of mine will not will make meaning to make it become a nonsense to someone who have not tested it. But whoever has tested it can never just like look at Saint Paul, uh, Saint Peter at Mountain Mountain Horeb on the Transfiguration. He gets himself lost and say, "Oh." Why can't we build three things here? One for you, Master, one for Elijah, and one for Moses. He forgot himself. That is what love of God can do. Many young men and women who are floating in erotic, emotional love discover nothing. And they, they only receive breaking of hearts, disappointment, pain, fear, despair. But once we encounter the love, then fear disappears. Augustine will say, love and do whatever you want. And here becomes the peace of our soul. So don't worry about what the world is saying. Move forward. As you move towards the this union, follow him in his cavalry. You will now find that his yoke is light and easy to bear. And Jesus will even make it very clear. Just like you will equally know that to be humble is a one of the most important thing on earth. You now equally know that even what you call the crosses and the suffering you are carrying is nothing but lesser body and full of sweetness. And that is what I will use as a conclusion. In heaven, all these things will turn into glory and beauty. God bless this word in your heart through Christ our Lord. Amen. Thank you, brother. So, any more questions? More interesting questions? If there is any, you indicate, raise your hand up and ask. You have the opportunity to do it now. Just unmute yourself and ask your ask question. Okay. Who is speaking? Good evening, brother Barnaba. Good evening. How are you? I'm fine, and you? Yes, I hope you are following the lesson. Yes. Okay. Brother Banaba, my subject is about the love of God, the pure love yeah. of God. I can love my brother, my family, and my mom, but the word is very easy, but the action to share with others is very difficult. And what is the receipt? The receipt, the receipt about the love to share with others. The word is very easy, but it's very difficult to love others like the way God loves us and to share God's love with others. So if I understand your question, it is easy to speak about it. And then it is a little bit difficult to enter. I think, I think her question is that she loves her family, brother, okay. sister, parents. But it is difficult for her to love other people as she loves her family. So what Thank about you. it? And how can she go about that? Thank you. Thank you. <laughs> now, I, I, think, I think I understand the question more. I think yes. she represents you well. OK. Now, uh, there is one thing you will know about love. One of those things one we know about love is that if you follow this lesson, if you follow this lesson gradually, you see that I began with animal love. Animal love is when one is moved by instinct, just like whatever you desire, as far as you get whatever you desire, you are, you are now, you can say that you love. So you will love like animal, as far as you can get something from someone. Love become a matter of gain, plus or minus. Then, but there is another level of love, which makes us human. I believe that this level is where you're operating now. You love because of something 
very close to you. You love like a human. You love what is very close. You love your, your fellow ones, those who are very close. There's nothing bad about it, but it is not yet perfection. What our Lord is trying to tell us is that in the journey of love, it can never be easy. What love begins by awareness, get this knowledge very well. The knowledge you have about some about your family makes you to love them. Then, but Jesus is not restricting himself in the family of Nazareth. He sees entire humanity as his own mother, his own father. And then he will begin to love humanity just as he loved his own mother. Look at when somebody came to ask him, your mother if your father is waiting for you outside. Say, my mother and my father who are there, they are those who hear my word and listen to it. So he, in this case, he now brings entire humanity closer to himself that those who hear the word and listen, they are my mother and my father. So in the journey of love, we must break all the barriers of racism, all the barriers of uh, uh, tribalism, the barriers of family bond. Then we must move towards a complete, that is why we call it sacrificial, crucified love. So we have to cut across. Then we are able to find entire humanity as one that we have to give. And then see ourselves as coming from one mother, this earth, and then have one father, God himself, and then be able to make a strong emphasis to break every other barrier. And that is moving out of ourselves. That is crucified, crucified love. So, and I have made an emphasis here that love is not sentiment, is not emotional. Genuine love is actually defined by sacrifice, sacrifice. So my question, my something, the uh, summary I would put here is that it is a growth, it is a purification. I would like you to go back to what we have done before and see how far it is possible to purify your love. And I want to make emphasis again, what I made last week. Love has been so much corrupted in our modern world today that when you hear love, people think about sensuality and the rest. People think about gain and love, gain, what they will gain, and advantage they will take over one another. So. In the Christian vision of love, we speak about agape, we, we speak about sacrifice, we, we, speak, we speak about making, following Christ the way he loved others. So I will conclude by telling you that, by emphasizing that in, in love, there should be liberation from, from racism, from tribalism, from family bonded into seeing the entire family as one in love that christ died for humanity not dying for a particular people he died for all so all those who love christ and who will love the way christ will love we surely break all those bonds and then move forward to make one's oneself available for love and the commission of love in the entire world. So may God bless this word, I think, in your heart. Brother Malaba. Okay. But is there uh, to love, to, have, to share God's love with others, is there any recipe by prayer or by fasting or? Okay, in loving, in a practical way of love, love can come through prayer. You can show love by praying for the entire world. You can, okay. you can equally show love by act of work of mercy, corporal work of mercy, feeding the hungry, the sick, the prisoner, and the rest. You can equally share love by working, doing the work of evangelization, trying to do that. But look at one thing I want to say here. It is love. When we go for that another teaching, you see that love is like a passion. It's like an ego. 
when we we'll make love, we'll be thinking to think from our heart, what shall I do for humanity? What shall I contribute to make sure that more souls are coming back to God? That is action of love. So practically, love is like service to humanity, trying to help those who are downtrodden, making great sacrifice for humanity to save them from a lot of. So during the pandemic, a lot of people risk their life in helping people to save them, to serve, to service them and do other things. In your place of work, you can see many places where you can practicalize love. Love is not just only by words. It is mostly defined in work. And that is why we talk about maturity of faith through participation in the work of love. Thank you. Thank you. Uh, Brother Banaba, another question, but it's outside the subject. Okay. It is about the station of the it is about the station of the it is about the station of the cross. Can I do it okay. at home to gain the you, plenary institute if it's acceptable, or should I do it in the church? In the Christian, the best place to do the sign of the cross in length is to follow the congregation in order to enjoy the cumulative indulgence. When you pray together, you enjoy what the church called cumulative indulgence. But when you pray alone, you still get indulgent, but not as when you pray in the community. Mm -hmm. So if one can pray in the community first, if you don't have opportunity to pray in the community, you can equally pray alone in your heart. But community prayers have more merit and mm -hmm. yield, more, yield, more, yield more grace. And that is what we call liturgy. So that is why the mass becomes the greatest of all the prayers because it is the prayer of Christ, the prayer of the, the, the prayer of Christ in his own body, the church. So that makes it more beautiful. So what in when we treat spiritual life and prayer, we now find out that prayer, private prayer gives life to the public prayer. If you don't learn how to pray privately, you will not learn how to pray publicly. So we will discuss that in future. Sure, when we talk about prayer. Okay, thank you. Thank you, Brother Vanama. Thank you. More questions on the topic? If there is any more question on the topic, you ask. Okay, brother, my question is this. Uh, we know that love is lies in the will, so it's willing the good of the other. Um, okay. Sometimes Why am I not connected? I'm not it becomes a bit difficult person. Repeat your question. I'll add my little bit from uh, up. Okay. Hello, can you hear me? I can hear you now. Okay, so I said my question is, how do you draw the line between willing the good of the order of someone, let's say maybe a colleague in the office, who you know wants to be promoted, but the quality of the work is questionable. People don't really know, but you know. So you're now torn between, do I expose this person's incompetency or do I allow this person to be promoted because the person needs the job and the money? So I guess my question is, to what extent does reason play a part in you being able to know when to say you're acting because you're willing the good of this person or when your when that such action may actually harm the common good, how 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 are you able to apply? How are you able to distinguish the two? Because sometimes people will say you're just doing it because you're envious, or sometimes you don't want to speak because you don't want people to think that you 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 want to. But then you know that this person's competency may not warrant the person being promoted, and it's not just in work; in so many things in life. How do you make a distinction between willing a person's good and where that good itself may be defective to other people? Brother, can I answer that question? Make your point. So I go ahead. Okay. Um, okay. With, with regard to the question so asked, I feel um, in an office where people are growing in a trade, as a child of God, and you notice that the person is incompetent in a particular skill, you can 
you know, put that person through. You can organize um, a kind of um, a seminar. You can opt to say, um, meet the manager, can we do this so and so and so and so, so that everybody, uh, you can give a talk so that everybody can be carried along. These are the things that can be done by the child of God to keep somebody's work and job, not to keep it at bay. Because if that person is reported without you first putting that person through and taking food out of their mouth, that has shown, it doesn't show love. But if you pick up courage and put that person through, and that particular skill, probably she is it's not that she is incompetent in all the skills in the job, but putting her through in the skill which she is, uh, you know, which she doesn't do well on, will be a perfect love given to that particular individual. Thank you so much. Thank you. Your answer is, is uh, okay, very wonderful, and has to be taken. But I will equally see it in two angles. The first angle I want to point out is, take for instance, as a teacher, uh, you are growing up because everything begins from, from foundation. So if you are the one who is looking after or training people, or the one forming people, you are a teacher, you, are do, you do a great harm to the community of people of this world to the larger good when you know that a child is not doing well and you're promoting that child that is equally a general harm to the entire entire world and we are facing it in different parts of the world we are someone who will not merit the position for example, if you're a medical doctor, you will not know what your work is, and you are promoted and satisfied to go and carry on that work, you will be endangering many lives, and that will be incompetent so, in that aspect. Then, on the other one, if one is in a new job and there is no much, the person is not learning well, not measuring it because he, he is there in a new way. Charity demand that one who can assist will do that. But the truth equally remains that when that person, you know that after all the effort to put the person through, the person still remains. Uh, cannot even amend because the foundation is not there and the company or whatever what is going down because of the person the silence is not a charity the silence is not uh, is not making the way of Christmas because here the company is at stake the life of other people is at stake so here one has to act rightly and justly by actually letting the company know what is true in order to save the company because that company does not actually depend on that person alone depends on the massive people if the company will be able to collapse the entire people will depend on that company. so what i'm trying to point out here is that charity inquiry requires that that person the person we are speaking about should uh, there need to speak up when there is great danger of even collapsing the entire system if that person cannot be helped. But as long as that person can be helped to measure up, can it demand that you should help the person to measure up and should not hinder the promotion of that person? So that is the two angles I would like you to see it. See it in the, in the sense of where there is even fortune to enter into an office and the office is suffering the this whole system is suffering because of somebody who cannot do that work. So there is a system, there's need to let the system, everything be corrected and put the right person there. Then, but where the person can be measured, can, can come up more, there's need for that person to be assisted to get to the best level. That is love. So in this case, we will be able to see that in the practicality of love, it is not actually a matter of what everybody wants. 
But what is good to be done that it should be looked at at that particular point? Because the good must the good is must follow the attribute, the, the, the demand of the will. The will seek the good as no as yet was revealed to it. So here now we have to look for the good. The, the good must equally be the good of the general good, the massive, not necessarily the, the, the general good, but the good that should portray the image of Christ in that call. Precious blood of Jesus Christ. Can I, can I so just much. say something briefly about that from my experience of working? Okay. Either by both as a supervisor and a supervisor. So um, I would just want to add from a Christian point of view because the person that asked the question mentioned that some people might see that as envy if they speak up. Yeah. yeah. So what I just want to advise briefly is at work is very good for us Christians to do something that that's the well, when I was from my previous formation they say apostolate of friendship. So that apostolate of friendship means befriending people genuinely out of love, especially at work, so that when you notice such incompetence, when you speak to that person and say, oh, I think you'd be very, you're, I like that you're going, to, you're, you're trying to go for this job, but I think you'll do it better if you go and do this training or do this one. That person is going to accept it willingly and happily because they see you as a friend who wants what is good for them. You see, so that issue of envy will be reduced or will not even be there. So I just want to say it's good for us to try to befriend people genuinely as much as possible because it makes it easy to help people assist and even to correct. So that's what I want to say. Thank you. Very important. Let there be no much um, healthy competition. Let our love bless our neighbor. Okay, more questions? Any other question in what we have heard today? Brother, because we are making more work. If not, I pray for you. Can I, I have a question. I okay, have a question. Okay. Yes, so I don't know how to put it. So in this journey to crucified love, how do we overcome all the temptations um, the temptations that we uh, face. Oh. How do we overcome the temptation and the way to love? And that is an important question. The answer is very simple. Uh, remember that we cannot do anything by our power. Hmm. There is need for grace assistance by faith, we ask God to me. But the interesting thing here in the journey of love, in the call of love is that the moment there is a sincere, genuine commitment, the love will not abandon us. The love will not leave us alone or leave us as a prayer to the hand of the enemy, the hand of the world. Jesus is such a, a person who, who is being drawn by little ones, those who are really seeking to love him. St. Teresa will make it very well. Says, when I remain little in the eyes of the Lord and I'm struggling to become perfect, if I am struggling to climb the step of perfection and I am falling like a little child, do you know one thing? Jesus will come there. We are I am on the floor in the basement of the level of perfection and take me from the hand to his heart. So now I, I, I am no longer moving the step. I will see myself already moving faster than many who are strong. I don't know what I get my little analysis. So in the struggle of perfection, if you remain little, you are making effort. You can remain humble. You will, you will be so surprised that God will pick you from the floor, from the base to his own heart. So, and when you are already in the heart of Jesus, you see, you see yourself moving. So God will be the one matching the steps for you. You will be moving and you will be in the heart of Jesus. 
and then see yourself moving forward. Look at this picture in this topic, in this uh, level of perfection. So you see this little situation struggling for, the for perfection. This, the truth here is that perfection is the call of the mystery. Jesus has the capacity of calling a lover from his own heart, and then you move faster than others. You move faster than others. So what is important here is very simple. Littleness, commitment, mm -hmm. sincerity. Then the love of yourself will carry you on his own arm. Your heart, your leg will no longer match his steps. You will see yourself flying. I remember how we do that. Uh, just you will even be in the in the chest of Jesus. You will be waving hands to others who are matching the steps and telling them, "My, I am already in the heart of my loved ones and all that." But you need to be little. You need to be little for God to be able to. And uh, I will probably say, cowards are, all, they are always victorious. Don't uh, don't feel so proud to dance where the angels who are afraid of matching their legs. What did I mean by that? Run away from all occasion of sin. Don't feel you are strong. And you can make it because you are strong. If you see, if it's, it is your hand that will cause you to fall, the spiritual secret is, is not necessarily cutting your hand, but simple run away from occasion of sin. I use the word run. Run away from the occasion of sin. Don't feel you are strong. If you feel you are strong, you will surely fall. We are human yes. beings created in the weak nature. There are those whom their cell phone are controlling. One of the first things I was recommending to some of my friends is selecting this video, is to learn to switch off their phone so that they become master. Then learn to delete some of them, delete themselves in some of the social media and restrict their conversation in the internet because the enemy has carried the war to our door post. We are fighting the enemy inside our own house. So with the high tech, this high technology, we are, we are now, most of us are, are, are enslaved. We are in the hand of the enemy. So we need to make a strong war, a strong fight. No one conquers without seriously committing himself or herself in, in complete struggle. So I encourage you that there is no way, easy way, but God save the humble little ones who trust in him. If you really desire to love God, God will surely catch you. In fact, the love of God is flowing everywhere, looking for those who will open their heart and their mind and say, Jesus, I want to love you. You see, you will be captured. So as uh, Jesus has arrested me in my little way, so I believe all hearts yearning to him, yearning for him will surely be captured. May God bless this word in your hearts to Christ our Lord. Amen. Amen. Any other important question? There are some questions I was expecting before we ask, but most of you did not ask it. Maybe you have understand everything perfectly. So thank you. Any other sleep, any other questions still? If there is any, you let me before we Brother Barnabas, this is Magali. Magali, okay. Yes, from Las Vegas, Nevada, USA. Okay. Um I had the workplace and uh, patients are asking me um how to reconcile to God when they have committed sins. They are not Catholics. So in my little knowledge, I asked them to ask God for contrition. But this word is kind of wide, very broad. So I don't know how else I can guide them. They are not Catholics but they want to have the forgiveness of God 
in the sense that they feel better <clears throat> in union with him. And I, I don't know, they might not uh, baptize through the Catholic Church, but they are baptized through their mm -hmm. faith. So as you say, we, when we are baptized, we are baptized into Christ, into his sufferings and going to his glory. And uh, I want to be more prompt to help them in the little knowledge that I'm getting. So please advise me if you will. Thank you so much. Yeah. Conversion is for everyone. Repentance is for everyone. So Magali, you begin the work of speaking the love of God, whispering the, the, the word of the love of God in their heart. Let them know that someone loved them and someone died for them. It is in this whispering, in speaking about the love of God, that they will begin to think about conversion and begin to think about repentance. And that is what Jesus talked about, conviction, the first love, the first level of this teaching. Those who did not even know the Lord. So make strong emphasis in your mission of evangelization. Speak about this love. Speak. Faith comes through the alley. Let them know. Let them listen. Let them hear. Share these messages to them. Share this important message we are teaching. God knows how to touch hearts. God knows how to draw souls closer. When they hear, St. Paul will say, how can they hear if someone did not speak about it? And if how can someone speak about it if someone did not go to them and speak that message? So all of us listening, we owe the world that call of evangelization. Jesus commissioned us, go and make disciples of all nations. How do we go and make disciples of all nations? We have to speak the truth, the message to them. Look at the messages of the precious God, the plenty, a lot of messages. How are we sharing these messages to the world? And this is one of the responsibilities. When I discover in myself that I have not done what I'm supposed to do, I don't know when I will leave this world very soon or now or later, but the truth is this. I owe the world to share these messages in the little knowledge God gave me. So and that is exactly what we are doing, trying to spread this message, let it be in the simple, ordinary world that ordinary people will understand. It. So we owe you owe that person the truth. So after explaining the truth, you leave them. Don't even force them to come to your church. Let them be the one who will desire and determine to come back to church. So take for instance, my father, my father was a pagan, he doesn't know the law, he doesn't know the truth. But I keep on telling him the truth, speaking about the message of Christ. I can't even force him until the time he decided to say, I want to be a Christian. All the idols, the charms, is worshiping, he brings it up willingly and then get converted and get baptized. So my humble, simple admonition is preach, speak the truth, buy these articles, our messages, and give to him or the families, show them the way of life, convince them. In, conv in convincing them, they will be converted they will repent and they can further go into deeper love with God. So that is my humble admonition. There's no other way. Then the one that you can equally add is prayer. Pray for them. Pray for their conversion. Pray for their understanding. Then God will do the rest after you have done what we should do. So thank, thank you. Brother. you. Any other questions? We have taken more time today than Father Grace. Someone is raising yeah, a um, I'm, 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 uh, I'm Ghana here. Okay. Only cross Pakistan, Malay. Um, I have a simple. Uh, your voice is uh, working. I uh, can't hear your voice well. So speak up again. Or oh, have we lost you? Uh -uh. I don't know whether you've heard me, brother. 
You know, we have not heard you. Just come up again. Your voice is. I'm saying that I have a friend uh, um, over here. Uh, he goes around to help. Your voice is still lost. We are losing your voice. I don't know what anybody is getting his patience clearly. Can I ask a question? Can he type it if it's possible to type it in the chat? Okay. So, no, send... but the... yeah, we are missing your voice. Maybe where you are, the, the service is not wonderful there. Okay. Okay. Can you send your message or you send it by a text message in the chat? So okay. that we can. Okay. Somebody said, I don't know what I can use. Okay. Okay. Can I ask a question, brother? Ask your question. Okay. Uh, the question is why is it so difficult for people to understand the precious blood messages? It is a uh, it is a it's a straight way. Then why is it so difficult for people to grasp it? Uh, the messages, I, I I don't think it's difficult to grab the message as such, because even the little little children around me here, they are understanding the messages and they are they can even explain it in a deep knowledge that you can hardly. So, but the major problem we have is um, ability to empty yourself and be more little like. The messages are very simple. And uh, that is exactly what I'm trying to do because I discovered that most of the devotees are looking at the understanding in a very high way. But the message is speaking on the very platform of love. The message is nothing but the voice of love. The message of precious love. Beginning from 1995, 5th of January, where our Lord said, console me, adore my precious love. That is the summary of all the messages. Before you will understand this devotion the messages, you have to understand that someone is asking for consolation. And that one asking for consolation is in love is seeking our love. So the message is all like just the language of love. And the terminology of love is actually a little bit difficult uh, to understand for someone who is not uh, who is not willing to join in that train of love. You will think that the person is joking. There will be a lot of confusions. What is this person trying to say? Just like many theologians will be asking, how can Jesus be consoled? Are we the one to console Jesus or Jesus to console us? Uh, you know, is the, what does it mean for Jesus? Is this, is this, is this action negating the, the resurrection that Jesus is sitting in glory and is no longer is not resting? But there's a lot of uh, a lot of questions. Well, uh, we are going to talk about those things uh, when we begin to discuss issues concerning the devotions and messages. But the truth I want to speak here is that this message is, is very simple and easy to understand, especially when we put ourselves in this shoe of love. Look at what I'm trying to explain about crucified love, animal love, and others. I'm trying to make it in a simple, ordinary way. And what are we even trying to say what we are trying to say, actually, is very simple, that we are human beings. We love. I will begin with our nature as animal. Then we go to the level of ourselves with human beings. Then we, and I would like you to use the things of this world to make a little comparison to what the message is speaking. It is interesting to note this, because that is one of the areas where most of the devotees are not. They want to become more spiritual, where our Lord is speaking ordinarily. They go mm -hmm. higher than what the message is talking about. So, my simple admonition is just read this message in a simple mind, in a simple spirit. 
follow. And I see the need for that is what I begin this conference that will last till. Uh, July or so. So it is important that we get this clearly. It is, I still make it emphasize, emphasize that the message are simple. Is it understandable? Little souls. That is only what I will say. You will pay attention as we move forward. You will be surprised when you click in into this understanding. You'll be so surprised. You'll see, ah, is this is that Barnabas is saying. It's very simple and very easy to understand. Thank you. I hope you agree. With, you may not agree or you agree with me. <laughs> uh, do you agree with me? No, no, no. As no, no. If you have not yet agreed. No, you will agree one day. Just pay a little attention with time as we make it. We are making a journey. The journey is not too far. It's very, yeah. very low, very simple. Are you still Please. with me? Yes, brother, I'm here with you. I'm listening okay. to you. Any other questions that there are some questions I don't know whether it's to read this, brother. How can we get your book? So India, book one on the messages and book two on one that you we are showing us. You can get these books. Uh, just contact NS. NS, my brother, is there. He will give you a how to. If you want to get it. Um, on shipping, we can ship it to you. If you probably want to publish them in your countries, you can equally submit it. But you go through my brother Ernest, who will direct you on how to go about it. Otherwise, says in the process of uh, showing love, what should you do when the people you show love doesn't? When the people you show love doesn't appreciate love it doesn't need uh, for one to show love it doesn't need to appreciate it doesn't need to seek the appreciation if you begin to seek uh one to appreciate love because before you show that love you are at the level of the human love you love because of gay so we are what we are talking about you love because he loves us first Jesus loves us when we are still sinners. So don't measure your love on what you will gain. Just like uh, you love because the, the person will love you in return. Another one, I am really uh, is, inspired. Thank you, brother Barabbas. Thank you. And uh, let the inspiration go to others. Teach others how to be inspired as well. So kind of this message to as many people as possible. Then another one said, Brother Barabbas, uh, good day. A question that is uh, obligation to pray the prayers if, if the rules of uh, purity. Okay. I said, okay, the person. You will not, uh, I don't understand the message again. Let me read it again. To pray the prayer of the rose of perfect purity. The person do not retake really it after two years. Thank you. Okay, I think the person is asking a question of those who are who have been receiving the rose of perfect purity, whether if they, they didn't do their program, whether they will take it again. I think that doesn't, doesn't concern what we are saying today. But the simple answer to that is that after three years, our Lord expect that you renew your you renew your your consecration by going to retreats, to retreats in order to do receive the rose of perfect spirit. You can receive it once in three years. So Okay. Another question is, uh, I think I will answer more, one more question and I'll leave it from there. So God be the, the glory. It says honor and adoration to this great people to hear directly from the dictionary on that. I think this one is just an appreciation. So, we will not go for go further 
بیارا uh, you will not go further to continue to answer the question unless there is question directly connected to that if not yes we will be rounding up okay father i think you are still here again we will pray for us today again i uh, before sorry. yes brother you said there was a question you expected us to ask which there are plenty of that? them okay <laughs> i was just so going maybe to... when when you get this you may get this work as a book when you get them as a book you will, i will raise the question you will not answer them yourself okay yeah, because questions. i wanted to suggest that you ask the question to us to see if we understood you but since it's already in the book that's okay mm. the, i will not ask that question because if i ask it myself it will not make meaning to you you won't okay. even understand it okay so i would like Good the morning. question to to come up from you okay. because there is a lot of uh, a lot of issues thank you so issues. much so i think the goal of this teaching is that each and every one of us will should pursue to love god we should make haste How do to I do begin it? the journey to love That's the oh, slide. Okay. so okay brother, let me brother, make it very clear announcement brother excuse yes. me brother I, I have a question posted that you didn't attend to. Please, okay. if you would, ask just me. one more question. Ask uh, question. I see it. Okay, the question I there asked are is this. The in the chat. Uh -huh. uh, I already posted it, but you didn't look at it. You said you were done. The question is this, is it a sin or a crime to ask for a flyer or a card that you can use to spread the, the messages of the devotion? I don't get to you right. Let me get that question again. Ah, <laughs> uh, okay. The Let question me. is this: Is it wrong if you ask uh, a group to produce a pamphlet or a card that you can use to spread the devotion, like the deconsecration of the host? Okay. Because Listen I know a lot now. of people, I don't want to get into argument with anybody, but in my church, I can be giving them the pamphlet every now and then, and I know that the okay. God we serve will touch their hearts to read it and change their ways. I'm not going to be confrontational. Okay, look, there is something I will make emphasis. A very important thing. All of you should listen and listen. There is nothing wrong in spreading the message but there is something wrong in spreading error interpreting the messages in a wrong way and uh, trying to have, uh, do something good in a vulgar way or in a take what is more important less important and take what is less important more important Look at my very self trying to teach you the devotion to the Christian God. I began with journey to love before I am begin to speak about the anguish and fears and understanding of the fear. I want to tell you now something. There is a way our Lord started this devotion. Our Lord, first of all, tried to capture our hearts then it is only when we now love that we can begin to speak about the appeals and be able to understand the spirits of carrying the appeals. But if you go out into evangelization, for instance, you enter into a community of people and you tell them, don't do this, don't do that, don't do that. You are not going to make any impact because the heart is not prepared. The ground is not water. Then people will begin to see you as a lawgiver. And uh, you are only restricted. Your message will make no meaning. In fact, you will even harden a lot of hearts that will could have listened to you when you come out with them, the important message. And that is one of the problems our uh, devotees are having. Some of them think that the greatest and the highest work of our Lord to do in this devotion is to go and carry arm and stand for me. 
you see somebody who is promoting communion in who is promoting communion in the tongue, but the person is wearing pants and is using preaching himself or herself. Taking uh, the person is not even combated in the heart. When you look at the person who is fighting for the Lord, the person is just a, a, a signal of a, an icon of Satan in May appearance. No simple, the person is even not even humble. So in this program, in this topic, we want to form ourselves first. We want you to change your heart. We want you to love. Drop those egos, drop those pride and power. Let us be humble. This message is, is there for the Lord. We, should, we cannot even be more agonizing than the agonizing Jesus Christ. Jesus is agonizing in pain, but we have to understand him and love him first and understand the, his teaching. That is exactly one of the problems we are having with a lot of people who have started with this devotion. And after some time, they feel that we are not uh, doing moving as fast as they want. Really, there is a lot of abuse. There's a lot of evil going on in the world. But before we even go into the world and tell people to convert, we have to we have to make the ground so make the ground in order to catch the fish. So this is exactly what I will actually want us to. And that is exactly the, the, the difficulty in guiding a group in trying to bring them into understanding the, the way. Somebody asked, the, the, the messages are so difficult to pass. Yes. So it is difficult, but it is easy for the little ones. It is easy for the little ones, very easy. And the best and simple way to understand is to pay attention. Let you be firm. It's not there is a stage to be reach. So what I'm trying to say here is that there is a level, a time, a place, uh, when we reach to a certain level of the union, we will understand the real meaning of the language of our Lord said, I am make, I'm not making this appeal to the world, but to you whom I love. That it is only when you love me intimately, then come closer to me, that you can allow this love to flow out. You pass a message, the world will understand that message. There will be a change. But if we don't understand this, we carry the emotion. You'll be like a woman who so much feel that he loved the husband. Then, because he loved his husband, and anytime the husband came home and uh, come home and say, say something, he will he will take all the words of the husband. He even fight for the husband fight his uh, mother-in-law, fight everybody around his home because he is trying to show the husband that they love him. But at a stage, she comes to understand that it is not even that thing he's doing that the husband wants. The husband wants him to love him, not in that way. When he discovers it, he now understands what the husband actually wants. That the one who is angry, he's not, wanting, he's, not, he's not asking him to fight people around him. He only wants him to know that he is either in pain, there's something he has to do. He has to do it in a humble way, not to fight all people around him. So wisdom shows that we should learn, we should be completely enveloped in love of the one who called us. Then in this case, we will now understand what he is, what he actually wants. And that is exactly one of my points I tried to mention. Among the apostles, Our Lady is the, the friend of our Lord's love, told by John. These people, apostle, uh, Our Lady operates in the sacrificial love, and that's why she was able to be able to show the Lord, the highest love on the journey to Calvary. She remained with the Lord and died with the Lord. Peter was on the level of human love. He was able to deny the Lord. When he is time to show the real things, he carried sword. Carried, uh, wanted to, it even cut somebody's ear and dropped the sword. When Christ said, put your sword in his place and ran away. 
And in running, he denied Christ three times because he's operating in the level of human love. Peter could have done wonderful if he has understand what it means to love sacrificial. So at that time of standing for the Lord, it is sacrificial love that matters. I lost the stand for me, be with me. So it, it does it does not mean uh, uh, the work of action. It is a mean a work of love. And that in my explanation, many a time I say it is more difficult to stand for the Lord than to fight for the Lord. Sacrificial lovers stand for the Lord. But human love and that now fight for love. And in fighting for love, they are fighting for themselves, for their own personal interest, not for the love they want. The great matters and sense of the church stand for the Lord. They don't fight. But those who want to become pillow of themselves and operate in human law fight for, try to fight and become militants and terrorists. So I will really make this. And that is why in the sacrificial law, forbiddance becomes the highest arm of love. So, my dear brothers and sisters, I would like us to calm down. Let us follow the Lord so that we become matters of love. It is, it is this point I'm sticking that makes this devotion so unique. And that is where we conquer. And that is where our victory lies. All that the winning of the world, conquering the world, bringing victory for God, we come through our own response to love. And that is why I began this journey with this journey to the crucified God. That is the heart of this message. How I wish I will open, I will have even a, 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 a very big uh, listen. I open your heart and put these things I'm speaking. You have peace, and God's victory will come. Not by power, but by simple love. I don't know whether I'm trying to speak to somebody. Am I'm I speaking making, to you? You are making sense, Father. Thank I you would so like much. you people to come down. We have a journey to go. We have a long way. If you don't understand, I am always there. Send me calls, send me messages. Send me I will equally send them. My, uh, my, where you will. I have not started giving you an assignment to ask me to do because I want us to reach to a certain level. Because before I begin to ask you to do this, let me even know what you understand it in this message. Thank you, my dear brothers and sisters. I, I know that Brother the more Brother I talk, the more I confuse you people. <laughs> Brother <laughs> Brother because I, I want you to operate in this level where I am, we are going. I don't want you to operate in a lesser degree. And I want you to see this I'm talking about in family level. You don't, you can't conquer the, the love of your partner by war. You conquer by, by, gent by gentility. The same thing with God. Hmm? It's, not, it's not that. Otherwise, you become enemy. All everybody around you will become enemy. You will you will hate your mother in law, hate yeah. your father in law, hate your brothers and sister, pursue all these people around you, your, your husband. You want to possess your husband, they know. Then you in the end exactly, of the exactly. now, you will find out that you gain nothing. Nobody will become closer to you. It is only you and your husband they know. You don't do that in the journey of God. Are you with me? Yes, brother. Okay. Yes, so brother. What brother, this, sorry, this message I'm trying to pass to you is a real message. So when you stop all this, then you will now own your husband and own your entire family, the family of your, the, the entire family of your of, of your husband. So in the family of Jesus, we are not only interested in Jesus. We are interested in Jesus. Jesus in law, Jesus uh, mother in law, Jesus brothers and sisters and brothers. We will we, we, win all of them. We are all one family. The body of yes, Christ God. is one. So let us get this through. And we must get it in love, not in war. Brother, 
brother, Thank can you. I say, can I show appreciation? Say something that's um, something you on. said made me very happy. Hold on, um, sister. Would you let sister okay, sorry. Ask sorry. Question. Sister okay, Yvonne, sorry. please ask your question. I didn't know you had a question. Yeah, we, it's just uh, yeah. a question regarding the videos. Would it be possible to post the videos like you did the first one? There was okay. the one from two weeks ago that was posted, but the one from yeah. last week has not been posted. We have, yeah, we are going to post it. I know if my brother Ernest is around, we post it. But people are making too much noise. Some people will leave their noise. So we are trying to edit and remove some of the noises so that it will be easy. So I believe that we will do that. But this particular one is direct to the YouTube. It's already linked to YouTube. You can see it all without any ABC. That is why we are begging. When we are in this program, try to mute yourself uh, when we others are speaking, especially when if where you are has or background noise, everything is being captured. So we are going to post it. I believe this one is already posted. You can go to YouTube you. and you see that. A few announcements. We are still working hard and preparing for international conference. So by next week, we are going to receive all the information about that. The reason why we should come together now is very obvious in order to move this mission forward. Then we're supposed to have this like 2019 and now 2022 because of the COVID. So get yourself ready if you are to come. So have it in mind that we are, are planning for that. Next savings to be part of that. Many countries who have not made their flag can equally do that. Many countries who want their image of Madonna to be in the garden of flower should equally let us know. Let us pray. I don't know. Is Father around here? Is Father Sabatin or Father Henley is there? Any priest there? Can bless us. Okay, yeah, I just came back from Mass now. Thank you, Father. Okay. Okay, okay in the name of us, the Son and of the Holy Spirit. Amen. 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 Mm -hmm. Almighty God, my Father, we thank you for the wonders of your love. You have instructed us on love today and the essence of love and the meaning of love. Love, you are love, and love is you. Only those who live in love, in authentic, agape love, a sacrificial love in the image of our Mother Mary and in the image of John the Beloved, are those who are, true, who are truly your children and understand you. Give us the grace of conversion to this true love. Like the matters our predecessors before us, we may live, up, live, up, uh, live out our Christian life and our Christian conversion. Conversion is a conversion in love, moving away from human love, from ordinary love to this self-sacrificial love, agapetic love. And then we will understand you, we will know you, and we will love you and prepare ourselves here on earth for eternal encounter with you in love. All this we ask through Christ our Lord. Amen. Amen. We also ask you to bless, progress, and expand, draw people to the precious blood devotion. Bless our brother, Reverend Barnabas, and all the adorers and consolers, especially this congregation, so that they will, they will continue to grow in strength and from strength, strength from strength, wisdom from wisdom to perfection, which you have destined for them and for all of us. And so, may the blessing of Almighty God descend upon us all, fill us with the love, wisdom, who is Christ Himself, in the name of the Father and of the Son and of the Holy Spirit. Amen. 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 Thank you, mm -hmm. Father. Thank you, all of you. See Thank you, you next brother. week. Thank you, next Thank week. You. Thank you. Bye. 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 Bye.
precious blood of Jesus Christ. Say, Father, we ask that the most precious blood of your only begotten Son, precious blood of Jesus Christ, will at this hour start raining in every heart, in every heart. Precious blood of Jesus Christ, say, so may the most precious blood that pours out from the sacred head of our Lord Jesus Christ, precious blood of Jesus Christ, the temple of divine wisdom, the tabernacle of divine knowledge. Precious blood of Jesus Christ, cover us, both now and forever. May the most precious blood that pours out from the sacred head of our Lord Jesus Christ, the temple of divine wisdom, tabernacle of divine knowledge, and sunshine of heaven and earth, cover us now and forever.